Hi, welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today, I'm going to start a new series on automating the automation using the Terraform provider for Azure DevOps. So if you've been following the channel at all, you may have noticed that I've been doing a lot of things in Azure DevOps manually. This episode is where we're going to get really uh, interesting and take all those steps that I do manually in configuring the Azure DevOps environment and we're going to automate those using Terraform. Now, I may not set up a backend state and manage my Azure DevOps projects and repos and things like that using, using Terraform state. Um, and we can, we will probably spend some time looking at that, but, um, at the very least for common practices where I want to, um, roll out the same template every single time to get a project started, I can at least encapsulate encapsulate that into what I call a one shot deployment. And this is basically using Terraform to encapsulate a template. That template, I'm going to run Terraform apply once, and I'm going to provision it to my target environment. And then I'm not going to maintain a state file. I'm just going to let it live out there. So without further ado, let's go look at the Azure DevOps Terraform provider and let's get started. So this is uh, on the Terraform registry. And you usually want to go and look at the documentation, just see how you can authenticate um, and declare your provider. So you can see we've got this required providers block, and it has some information here about um, how to specify the org service URL and the personal access token, which of course, like all other providers, you can either set them in the provider block, or there's oftentimes uh, kind of hidden environment variables that they look for to pull the value from, which is probably the more secure way to go because you don't want to check in your provider file um, with sensitive information in it. So that's that's why we have these environment variables here. So what in order to get an Azure DevOps Terraform provider up and running, it looks like I need two things. I need the Azure DevOps org service URL, and then I need a personal access token that can be used to access Azure DevOps. So let's, uh, let's look at how we can get this project up and running. So in Visual Studio uh, code, I'm just going to create a little tester project here. And I'm going to declare my provider block. So I'm going to go grab the provider block. And you know what, let's, let's just include the main resource there for our Azure DevOps project. And we're going to just try and automate an Azure DevOps project. So this is the version that's in the example, but that's not the latest version. Um, you, you always got to remember and check the version because a lot of these, uh, the, these samples are just, you know, stored in the GitHub repo and they're exposed through the, uh, register, the Terraform registry. Um, but a lot of times, uh, the authors of the providers will forget to update the version within the example. So you always want to go check. Uh, what the latest version is and make sure you update your example to, to use that. Otherwise you're going to be working on some good knows how old, how old is this? Uh, the original version of this provider from two years ago, uh, which probably doesn't have a lot of interesting things in it. So we're on point zero, zero point five zero. Okay. So we're just going to grab that, drop that in there and there we go. So now so now um, I need to configure my environment to have those uh, settings that I need. So I'm going to go grab the service URL and I'm going to, I'm going to set up um, a, a little local Terraform runner. And I usually use the same, the same naming convention when I set this up, it's just going to be debug.sh. And this file is going to allow me to set environment variables that have sensitive information in it. And because I've add, added this convention to my git ignore, I, I don't ever have to worry about these files getting checked in to the sor my source code repository, uh, which is a very good practice. So if you look at my git ignore, you know, basically, I, I mean, I use this convention a lot, right? So dot debug, it's a hidden file, um, which really doesn't have to be hidden, but I just like how it keeps things together. Debug.sh is typically where I'll run a local, a local Terraform script to deploy stuff or Packer for that matter. Um, and then debug.tfrs is where I'll keep sensitive parameter values or input, input variables to my Terraform, uh, solution. 
So both of these things I'm going to set up. So when he's back to my debug.sh, I've got my Azure org service URL stubbed out. Let's go get this Azure DevOps Pat token, and let's drop that in there as well. And now to get this URL, this URL is going to be super easy to get. It's uh, there. There's no magic here. I just need to go, you know, find my service URL, which uh, is right here. Now infrastructure is a project, so when I go take this value, I'm just going to drop the project from the end. And right off the bat, this is my this is my organization service URL, um, and that's it. So now I need a PAT token. Now, unfortunately, PAT tokens are tied to a user, which is not super great from a security standpoint. Um, I suppose you could set up a, 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 you know, a runner or a service account user um, and grant them access to Azure DevOps that you want this to use. But for this case, I'm going to be using it locally to do one-shot deployments. So it's kind of okay that it's uh, that it's using my uh, my own PAT token. So I'm just going to go generate a PAT token, and I'm going to call this my MacBook Air. I'm sorry, my my MacBook Pro, and it's going to be for the organization. And I'm just going to give it full access, okay? And we're going to drop that into my file. And don't worry, by the time you see this video, that pad token will be uh, revoked. So you will not be able to pwn my Azure DevOps environment. Uh, sorry. Um, and there we go. So I've got this these tokens set up. And so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run Terraform init, then I'm gonna run Terraform uh, apply, okay? And that'll just generate a, a plan and then we'll have to um, auto approve it, okay? And so, actually, let's let's just let's just pass in um, a ver a variable to say what. Uh, actually, we'll just do we'll use a technique my colleague said, dollar star, which should take all the parameters that I pass in, um, and pass it and pass it on to my Terraform command here. So there we go. So that's my debug data sh. Okay, and so let me, I can test this. Um, I can run. So change mod execution on debug.sh to make it an executable file. And now I can just write debug.sh and I'm going to run plan. So it set those variables, invalid provider configuration. Personal access token is required. It, it actually looks like it's not getting my, my stuff. Let's uh, let's go check. Let me let me just slam an export on here, um, and and we'll just set set it like that. I think that that's probably the problem. There we go. So um, yeah, don't forget to export. Um, again, I'm not like a bash expert or anything like that. So sometimes I forget stuff like this, but um, usually you can set variables that are that are used temporarily in in your shell um, without exporting but i think in this case the way terraform the way the azure devops terraform provider is looking for these variables it really needs them to be um, exported as an environment variable so take that as as it were and so now um i've got i've got my main project here i'm just going to put the main project into in here and uh, we'll, we'll just see what happens. So now I'm going to run Terraform apply, auto approve. Oh, did I, did I forget to save my versions file? Yeah. Always make sure you save your files. The following project already exists. Do I have a project called project name already? That's interesting. <laughs> uh, I have not run. I don't think I've run this demo before. Let, let's go look. I, I guess I do. Um, whoops. Let me. Maybe I did that for my MacBook Air. So I mean, I, I can delete this project.
There we go. It might take some time to, there, there still may be a conflict because depending on how, how quickly yeah, it's, it seems to be fine with it. So I deleted it manually from Azure DevOps and then I brought it back and there, and there it is. So just like that, um, you know, we got your, the Azure DevOps environment set up and we provisioned a project. Um, of course this looks kind of whack and we provisioned a project using the Azure DevOps pro, uh, Terraform provider. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope you like this video. We're going to do a lot more stuff with this provider. We're going to provision repos. We're going to provision, uh, pipelines. We're going to, we're going to configure those pipelines. We're going to import Azure credentials and set them up so that basically we can have a turn turnkey, uh, Terraform project, um, in our Azure DevOps solution with branch protection, with Git flow Im implemented, you know, so, so that our branch is protected and all that, um, just with turn of a key running Terraform apply one time. So, uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did smash the like button. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Or if you, if you've been ex enjoying the channel, please subscribe. It really helps the channel. Um, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can start doing some live streaming and stuff like that. So it'd really help out. Um, and when you do make sure you smash that bell so that you know, uh, when my next video drops, thanks again. This is the Azure Terraformer signing off.